Hello, so in the short video we're just going to do now is just to show you how to assign uh, your trigger inputs to the CVX controller. So as default, uh, trigger 1, TRG1 on the terminal block, is assigned automatically to all cameras. If you want something different, then uh, we'd have to uh, make a setting. So I'm just going to just quickly show you how how that setting is made and where, the set, where to wire those into and things. So first of all, just go to Utility. We can look at the I.O. monitor and just to display where the triggers are. That's uh, TRG1, 2, and uh, this uh, input here, F in 2, can actually be assigned as TRG3, which is trigger 3. And uh, this uh, F in 3 can actually be assigned as TRG4, trigger 4. So if we have four cameras uh, selected and we want four independent triggers, that's possible. But we have to make some uh, further setting inside the software. So let's just go into our setup mode. And then you'll notice um, if I just click on camera one and camera setup, you can see here it's assigned trigger one as the, uh, the trigger that we're actually using. So to make a change to that, we can just click edit on the set camera menu and then click onto the trigger tab. And then down at the bottom, there's uh, set advanced. So like I mentioned before, we only need to make a setting here if we're not having any all the cameras triggering simultaneously. So if, if one camera is going to be triggering at a different time to another camera, then we need to make this type of setting. So for example, we could be using like a random trigger. And this means we can operate both cameras independently. So I'll just click OK here. And then let me go into our run mode. And I'll just give you a quick practical demonstration of how that could operate. So we've got the two cameras set up here. And now if I trigger on TRG1, you can see camera one's been triggered. If I trigger again, again, camera one is triggering through, we're getting the OK signal. Now, if I switch across to the camera two and trigger again, automatically camera one information is uh, removed and we're just focusing on camera two now. So as I'm triggering through again, and I get to camera four, uh, trigger four or five, sorry, test image five, it goes okay. And then you can see the uh, it's a good output, obviously. So this is a random trigger, and it's basically assigning independent triggers to the uh, the two uh, individual cameras that I've got connected here. And like I say, we can connect up to four cameras. Another method that we could use is if I go back in again to set camera and the trigger menu, and uh, click advanced again here. We've also got a multi-capture. So I just click here, multi-capture. And this is a sequenced trigger event. And when we want to use this is if we wanted to take multiple images of the same part, but maybe under different lighting conditions. So if I just go into the details setting here, you can see under the current setup, it's automatically capturing after the first shot, and we're capturing two camera, two uh, making two captures. So just click OK and OK again, and you can see at the above as well, two captures have now appeared. So let's say, for example, on the first capture, we want to take a, a, a an image with a shutter at one six one sixtieth of a second, and then on the second capture, we want to take a much darker image. So let's say one five hundredth of a second. We can then take these two images just by using the one trigger, and then we get uh, two uh, two actual captures from that, which we can then inspect. So one will be a very helated and one be underexposed. Thank you very much.